One of the most interesting A Song of Ice and Fire characters, who was almost entirely omitted from Game of Thrones, is Jane Poole. Ironically, one of the most fascinating aspects of her existence within the narrative is that she's a character who doesn't actually appear to be all that important. She seems so unimportant that the TV adaptation didn't even bother including her beyond season one. But she has, and undoubtedly will continue to play one of the most vital roles in huge elements of the character developments for many major players, as well as in the story at large. For those who are unaware, at the start of the story, Jane is Sansa Stark's closest friend and the daughter of Van Poole, the steward of Winterfell. Unsurprisingly, Van is killed when the rest of House Stark's entourage is eliminated in the first book, but Jane actually survives. After the massacre, she's given to Peter Baelish, who promises to find a place for her. Although Jane's ultimate fate isn't revealed for quite a long time, the reality of what she's gone through and is going through right now is beyond horrifying. Essentially, her story is the character arc that was given to Sansa Stark in Game of Thrones' fifth season. Littlefinger handed Jane over to Ramsay in order for her to pose as Arya Stark and after what is implied to be years of exploitation and abuse at Littlefinger's hand, Jane now suffers even more horror at the hands of Ramsay. And ironically, Theon Greyjoy seems to be one of the small cares and comforts she encounters in this torturous scenario she finds herself in. And while replacing Jane with Sansa in the TV series is an abysmal, offensive decision on a multitude of different levels, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that Jane Poole herself is actually vitally important. Jane Poole herself truly matters. And the role that she has played and will likely play in the future is legitimately going to change the world of Ice and Fire. Clearly, it cannot be a coincidence that the fake Arya Stark is Sansa Stark's childhood bestie. The fact that Sansa and Jane both began their story in Winterfell, made it all the way to King's Landing, and have managed to survive to this point in the plot and appear to be on a collision course with each other in Winterfell or the North, cannot be unintentional. And Jane's role in the future of A Song of Ice and Fire seems obvious and incredibly dramatically relevant. Jane has already done a great deal to change the face of the story at large, despite being a helpless victim for so much of it. Theon's pathway towards something resembling redemption has largely been driven by her and the belief that she is Arya Stark has galvanized many in the North against the Boltons. But there is a very powerful subtext with Jane's storyline and the Northmen's willingness to fight for the so-called Arya Stark that the audience should be paying attention to, and that will likely have a great deal of impact on the future. Of course, it's very moving that so many people are willing to fight for the Ned's daughter, but Jane Poole is just as worth fighting for as Arya Stark is. It's a poignant example of how lowerborn or common people are seen as acceptable collateral damage or merely a tool to be used in the battles between nobility, while nobles are valued even when they shouldn't necessarily be. Yes, Arya is a worthy cause to fight for, but she is worthy in the same way that every human being is worthy. And the fact that Arya's torment has energized the North to fight against the Boltons, when they have been horrifically abusing less important people for years, is not necessarily admirable. It's also interesting to look at Jane in the context of Theon's character development, because he was a highborn future lord whose greatest crimes were harming those who he deemed irrelevant. But in a world full of people willing to put themselves on the line for Arya Stark, Theon is willing to put himself on the line for Jane Poole. Not for glory or to be redeemed as a hero, but because he understands that even if Jane is the only person who appreciates it, she is someone worth fighting for. The books have obviously left Jane and Theon off on a cliffhanger, but the likelihood of Jane Poole actually dying seems nearly impossible. Because while Sansa will be the one to take down Littlefinger, she almost certainly won't be doing it without Jane. It's actually fascinating and incredibly ironic. George R. R. Martin has seemingly made Jane Poole into the inverse of Peter Baelish, and Littlefinger doesn't even realize it. Despite the fact that he's supposed to be one of the most brilliant men in the Seven Kingdoms, 
he has lost sight of one of the key facts that led him to so much success when no one expected it. Littlefinger's manipulations have gotten him very far in the world. But it's undeniable that he was immeasurably helped by the fact that essentially, no one ever thought he was important or powerful enough to make a difference. So the High Lords and Ladies were never clocking him as a threat. They have all seen him as a tool to be used, but as someone who could never pose a genuine danger to them or their position, because he's so low on the totem pole that he couldn't possibly take them down. Littlefinger's perceived lack of power and importance is largely what enabled him to start the War of the Five Kings and tear the entire world apart in the first place. Therefore, it's interesting that he's so willing to use someone like Jane Poole as a random tool in his tool belt. Peter Baelish is obviously an extremely arrogant person, but by using and abusing Jane, he has likely become the architect of his own demise without even realizing it. Underestimating her value and treating her as someone that he can exploit without repercussions will almost certainly be a linchpin in his ultimate downfall. Littlefinger, the Lannisters, and the Boltons simply saw Jane as a lowborn girl raised in Winterfell who knew enough to pass as Arya Stark, and they treated her as such. It's directly implied that Littlefinger sexually exploited Jane before she was even offered up to Ramsay. And although many people were involved in this plan, Jane knows that Littlefinger is essentially the one who sold her off to the Boltons. And of course, when this initially happened, she was completely powerless to do anything or to stop it. In Littlefinger's game of chess, Jane Poole was just a pawn, while Sansa is likely his queen. But in reality, he sees them both as mere pieces in the game that he's playing. And that is his mistake. Jane is one of the few people, aside from the Stark family, that Sansa misses and seems to reminisce about fairly often. And she is likely one of the few people in the world that Sansa actually trusts. Sansa will take Jane at her word. And after being a tool in many of Littlefinger's machinations, she will undoubtedly believe Jane when she hears what actually happened to her. And importantly, Sansa is likely one of the only highborn people in the world that Jane would trust enough to tell the truth to. Like many characters, Littlefinger's hubris will be his downfall. But there is a particular poetry to his downfall essentially coming from the better reflection of himself. Like Peter, Jane is someone who was taken advantage of by people more powerful than she was. Like Peter, Jane is someone who was believed to be too unimportant to have any real effect on anyone else. And she is someone who Peter himself believed could be taken advantage of without any consequences or repercussions for him. But unlike Peter, Jane hasn't absorbed the mistreatment that she's gotten from others and become a worse person because of it. Unlike Peter, Jane isn't someone who would use whatever power she could muster in order to hurt or manipulate them to her own advantage. Not only will Jane be the key to Littlefinger's destruction, but once he's destroyed, she will not become him either. Ironically, she will make the world a better place purely by experiencing the horrors that couldn't even compare to Littlefinger's youthful mistreatment, and not becoming as terrible of a person as he is. It's extremely unfortunate that Game of Thrones completely omitted Jane Poole for many reasons. The notion that two female characters within a story can simply be swapped for each other without it affecting the broader plot is absurd. Putting Sansa in the position to be exploited by Ramsay was disgusting. But most importantly, Jane Poole has intrinsic value just as she is. She largely exists as another reminder of how the powerless and common people suffer most when the High Lords play the Game of Thrones. But she also exists as a reminder of the fact that even those who don't seem important can change the course of history. She isn't the girl who the entire North will rally around to save. But she is the girl who made Theon a better man, who will almost certainly stop Littlefinger, one of the worst people in Westeros, and who will convince Sansa to eliminate Peter Baelish and step into her own power. In many ways, Jane Poole is truly the key to the North. But what do you think? 
Will Jane Poole be the ultimate destroyer of the most powerful politician and most brilliant manipulator in A Song of Ice and Fire? Or will her story go another way? Leave your comments and opinions below. And if you're interested in more content like this, like and subscribe.